Okay, this is the third part of a series of videos where we're exploring integer partitions and the rogers ramanujan identities. So let's recall a definition. So we say that lambda is a partition of n, and we write this notation. If lambda is a k-tuple, where the sum of the parts equals n, and we have this non-increasing rule. So lambda 1 is bigger than or equal to lambda 2, and so on and so forth, up to lambda 1, which is bigger than or equal to n. I mean, sorry, bigger than or equal to 1. So next, we define this partition function, which is p of n, which is the number of partitions of n. And in the last video, we sketched a proof that the generating function for the number of partitions of n is given by the following formula, where we're using q as the formal variable. So we have p of q. So notice that's the sum n equals 0 to infinity of p of n q to the n. So p of n being the number of partitions of n. So that ends up being the product m equals 1 to infinity of these rational functions, 1 over 1 minus q to the m. And you want to see that as an expansion via a, geomet a geometric series. So let's interpret this a little bit. So here we have p of q. So I'm going to write it out in terms of an infinite product. So here we have 1 over 1 minus q times 1 over 1 minus q squared times 1 over 1 minus q cubed, 1 over 1 minus q to the fourth, and so on and so forth. So let's see what each of these parts of this product give us. So this part gives us uh, parts of the partition that are equal to 1. So let's write that as parts equal to 1. Great. This gives us parts of the partitions that are equal to 2. This gives us parts that are equal to 3. And this gives us parts that are equal to 4. So that's how we interpret each part of this product. And that was sketched in the proof in the last video. Now let's expand each of these as a geometric series and interpret some more stuff. So now we can expand this first part as 1 plus q plus q squared plus q cubed, and so on and so forth. And I'm actually going to write this as 2 times 1 and 3 times 1. And then we can expand the next one, 1 plus q squared plus q to the 2 times 2 plus q to the 3 times 2, and so on and so forth. And then we have 1 plus q cubed, and so on and so forth. And now let's see what each of these parts tell us. So this is corresponding to a partition with no parts equal to 1. Because here we have q to the 0 power. Now this one is corresponding to a partition with exactly one part equal to 1. And then this guy right here would be exactly two parts equal to one, and so on and so forth. And so notice, if we were to cut it off at this point and go that way, everything on this side would be uh, partitions with one or zero parts equal to 1. And then everything uh, in this direction would be um, partitions with uh, two or more parts equal to 1. So that's how we can cut off this geometric series kind of in the bottom half and then in the top bit. Okay, and then the same thing we can do right here. So notice this is no parts equal to 2. This would be 1 part equal to 2, 2 parts equal to 2, 3 parts equal to 2, and so on and so forth. So if we cut this one back this way, this would be, for example, partitions with uh, 0, 1, or 2 parts equal to 2. And everything uh, on to the right would be partitions with three or more parts equal to two. And then you can see that for all of these. Okay, good. So now that we have this set up, um, I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to look at some generating functions for a couple of restricted partitions. Okay, so let's do it. 
Okay, so the first example I want to look at is this thing, I'll call it p odd n, and that'll be the number of partitions of n with only odd parts. So in a previous video, we made a chart and we calculated this value for the first couple of numbers n, but here we want to find a generating function. So let's recall that the unrestricted generating function for partitions was given by 1 over 1 minus q times 1 over 1 minus q squared times 1 over 1 minus q cubed times 1 over 1 minus q to the fourth times 1 over 1 minus q to the fifth and so on and so forth infinitely far. And recall that um, this was the part that correspond to parts equal to 1, parts equal to 2, parts equal to 3, parts equal to 4, parts equal to 5, and so on and so forth. So if we're only interested in odd parts, then we can just get rid of all of these portions of this infinite product that have to do with um, partitions with even parts, for example, 2, 4, 6, and so on and so forth, and it follows that the generating function for the number of partitions of n into odd parts will be given by 1 over 1 minus q times 1 over 1 minus q cubed times 1 over 1 minus q uh, to the fifth and so on and so forth. So we can write that all in one as uh, the product m equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 1 minus q to the 2m minus 1. Good. And then furthermore, it similarly follows that the number of partitions into even parts is going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus q squared times 1 over 1 minus q to the fourth and so on and so forth, which that's going to give us the infinite product m equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 1 minus q to the 2m. So just like all things with partitions, it's pretty difficult to write down a general formula for the number of partitions, but it's pretty easy to argue what the generating function for that number of partitions should be. Okay, so I'm going to clean up the ward and then we're going to look at another example. Okay, so now we can look at the number of partitions of n where the parts are distinct. So again, we looked at small values of n for this um, in a previous video, but now we want to look at the generating function. So again, let's recall the general generating function, but let's rewrite that with the geometric series form. So we have 1 plus q plus q squared and so on, 1 plus q squared plus q to the fourth and so on, uh, 1 plus q cubed plus q to the sixth and so on. And notice that each one of these controls the number of parts that are equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. So this is 1 part equal to 1, sorry, 0 parts equal to 1, 1 part equal to 1, 2 parts equal to 1. This is 1 part, e sorry, 0 parts equal to 2, 1 part equal to 2, 2 parts equal to 2, and so on and so forth. If we want distinct parts, then that means we want 0 or 1 parts equal to each of the possible numbers. So let's uh, point that out. So distinct means <clears throat> there are zero or one of each part of the partition. So that means we can get rid of everything from here right in each of these products. So notice because this is counting two parts of size one, this is counting two parts of size two, and so on and so forth. So that means it follows that the generating function for distinct partitions can be given by this. This is one plus q, one plus uh, q squared, 1 plus q cubed, and so on and so forth. So this is the infinite product, m equals 1 to infinity of 1 plus q to the m. Okay, so let's look at one more which is slightly different. Let's say it's p 
PR of N, and let's say that's the number of partitions of N where each part is repeated at least two times. So again, we're going to use our standard strategy, which is starting with the unrestricted partition generating function, and then deciding which parts of it we need to keep. So we'll write the geometric series version of it. So we'll have PQ, so that's 1 plus Q, plus Q squared, plus dot dot dot, 1 plus Q squared, plus Q to the fourth, plus dot dot dot, 1 plus Q cubed, plus Q to the sixth, and so on. And we have an infinite product like that. And recall that these are the parts corresponding to 1, 2, 3, and each of these parts of the sums are the number of times those parts are repeated. So there are zero ones, one one, two ones, zero twos, one two, two twos, and so on and so forth. So here we want each part to be repeated at least two times. So that means each part needs to be in this partition two times, three times, or more. So that means we're going to take this unrestricted generating function and we're going to get rid of the first bit because this corresponds to zero ones or one one, but that's not allowed by our restriction, and so on and so forth. So that means here we have PR of Q will be equal to Q squared plus Q cubed plus Q to the fourth. Remember these are uh, parts equal to one, so we're just raising each one by one. And then we have here Q to the fourth plus Q to the sixth plus Q to the eighth. Those are parts equal to two, so we're increasing by two each time. And here we have Q to the six, Q to the nine, Q to the 12, and so on and so forth. But now notice each of these are geometric series, but we have a starting term which, which is not equal to one, which means we'll have to use the more general formula for the geometric series. So here we have Q squared over one minus Q. Now this one is Q to the fourth over one minus Q squared. This one is Q to the sixth over one minus Q cubed, and so on and so forth. So it's pretty easy to see that here we have the product M equals one to infinity of Q to the two M all over one minus Q to the M. And that's our generating function in this case. Okay, so the real takeaway here is that, again, I'm gonna reiterate, it's hard to find a formula for the number of partitions with a certain restriction or with no restriction at all, but it's pretty easy to write down a generating function for that number. Okay, in the next video, we're gonna use this fact that we can write down generating functions to prove some theorems that certain restricted partitions have the same number as certain other restricted partition functions. Okay, good, so that's the end of this video.